So officially going to welcome everyone out tonight. Thank you so much for joining us for our guest team call. Um, very, very excited to introduce Presidential Diamond, Matt Hall. If you haven't had the honor and privilege of hearing from him yet, you will be very inspired tonight. <laughs> you will not be disappointed at all. You'll be left wanting more. Um, he's such, my nation met Matt um, in South Africa. So the convention of leadership, I think it was, and he came back really raving about um, Matt and just how lovely he was and how inspiring he was. And so we're going to hear about Matt and his story. Um, he's very successful in doTERRA and he's had a journey with it. Like we all do, we all have our individual journeys. He's got a journey that I think lots of people can relate to. And he has three children as well. So he's a family man. Um, he builds day terror. So, Neil, would you mind muting? Yeah, done it. You're muted. You're now, you're now you're muted now. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Thanks. Thanks, Neil. Um, and I shall hand the time over to Matt. He's going to tell us a bit about his story to begin with. And then I shall ask him some questions after that. If my computer or internet freezes here in beautiful Devon, Neil is my backup and he will try to read my writing and take over the questions. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Matt. If you could possibly unmute yourself and yes. I'll pin you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Awesome. Hello, hello. Good evening. So exciting to be with you guys today. I'm so honored and grateful for the opportunity to come here today and share a little bit of our doTERRA journey. Um, we just this last week, actually, on the presidential trip, we had our 11-year doTERRA anniversary. So our story is a long one. I'm going to try to, you know, shorten it down to just a few minutes. Um, but I want, I think that our story is really a, it's a story that a lot of people use to help their teams in moments of difficulties. Like each one of us go through different ups and downs in our business. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited to share. Uh, I'm going to let me see if I'm able to share my screen. Would you guys be able to allow me to share my screen? Uh, yeah. I'll prepare some pictures to share as I go through our story. Um, but like I said, my wife and I have been in doTERRA. There we go. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. So let me give you guys the proper introduction. And I always like to start with a picture of my family. My beautiful wife, Shantae, is the one who brought us into doTERRA. She was actually living in Taiwan uh, 12 years ago and going through one of the hardest emotional times in her life. And a friend who was just a customer of the essential oils referred her to the oils and said, hey, I use these for my digestive issues. I don't know if they could help you with, with your emotions, but I hear that they do. And so my wife hunted down some Taiwanese lady and just bought retail three bottles. Oh, they're not there. Three bottles of essential oil, Serenity, Citrus Bliss, and Balance, and started using those three oils, bought them retail, didn't have an account or anything like that, and just used three oils for a, an entire year, right? Can you imagine like going a whole year with only three essential oils? Um, but they transformed her emotions. And then when she moved back to Utah, where we live, she was like, wow, I want to be a part of something bigger than me. And I don't know if any of you have felt that call. That's probably why some of you are here in doTERRA is you want to be a part of a purpose, a mission and do, you know, do do good work in the world. And so um, she we ended up getting connected with our mentors. I'll talk a little bit more about them in a minute. And I always like to honor them. But that's how we got started. It was because three of the oils transformed uh, her emotional health. And when, when I look at like what we've experienced now, I'm going to show, I just thought I'd show a few pictures also from the presidential trip, because I want you guys, as I'm telling my story, I want you to visualize here in like one year, two years, five years, 10 years, whatever, whatever it may be, uh, living the life of your dreams. And that's really what doTERRA has allowed us to do is live the life of our dreams in so many ways. So uh, earlier this year, actually, I was able to go to Kenya. Some of you maybe have been to Kenya uh, on a co-impact sourcing trip. And I was able, we were able to paint a school. And this is some of the, some of the reasons why I got involved with doTERRA is I wanted to do good in the world. This one right here, this is a picture of my friend, Chris, the painter. He helped us paint uh, a school there in Kenya. 
And we talk on WhatsApp every single day. Every single day, he sends me a good morning message. Uh, and he's going through university right now and just doing awesome things in his life. Not so we got to see, uh, we got to meet some of the farmers. This was Samuel and Rita who farm geranium. And I'll tell you guys, I've always hated geranium. Like in terms of the essential oils, it's probably been my least favorite uh, just for smell. I don't know. I've just never resonated with it. But now I'm selling geranium like crazy because I met Samuel on this trip and I saw how just his teeny little farm has transformed his life and helped him to multiply his income by eight times. And so now I'm talking about geranium all the time. Um, so if you don't already love geranium, all you need to do is Kenya and go to Kenya and you'll fall in love. Uh, we were just on the presidential trip. This has been uh, our favorite trip to go on the last three or four years in doTERRA. And this was one of Shantae's big whys, uh, was to be able to travel. That was always a big desire for us, but especially to be able to surround ourselves with people who are working you know, insanely hard to, like several of you are, to transform the world and to be surrounded by just amazing people. So on this trip, we were able to go to the, go to the Dead Sea and float in the Dead Sea, rub that mud all over our bodies, as you can see here. Uh, and they say that it's got, you know, tons of therapeutic value and properties and whatnot. I just felt like a little child having fun. Uh, so it was worth it for me. We got to go to Petra and see the history of the Nabataeans and the role that they played in the frankincense trade and uh, throughout history connecting, you know, all the way from China to Africa to Egypt to Europe. And they were really kind of the central point in the middle of the desert that managed these trade routes around the world. Uh, we had some amazing experiences in the Wadi Rum Desert, where they filmed The Martian and Star Wars and pretty much any, you know, any uh, uh, film that takes place on a different planet, they film in Jordan. We then extended the trip and went to Jerusalem with a bunch of doTERRA leaders and corporate uh, people and got to see, you know, where Jesus walked. The, this is the Garden of Gethsemane. This was the, the temple entrance anciently to Jerusalem, or the, the entrance to Jerusalem. This is the Garden Tomb, uh, one of the possible sites of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we've been able to create, live this amazing life, right, and have all of these experiences thanks to our doTERRA business. And I'm going to tell you guys where our business is at today, but then I want to take you back to the beginning <laughs> because I think you'll be pretty shocked. So, okay, here are those three, three bottles of essential oil. Um, just to give you guys a few stats that I think you'll you'll find interesting. So today, um, this month so far, our doTERRA team has done 16,000 enrollments this month, okay? Um, every month we do over 15,000 for now over, a, over or close to a year now, I believe. Wow. Um, we have uh, almost 200 diamonds on our team today. So I think we'll hit 200 diamonds this month with... Uh, with BOGOs, <laughs> a lot of new diamonds hitting, which is exciting. Uh, we have 15 presidential diamonds on our team. So 15 of those diamonds are presidentials and over 40 of those are blue diamonds, okay? So we, we built this, this incredible organization. We have an amazing team, right? But I wanna show you guys how it started and kind of what our beginnings were like. So we got started 22 years old in doTERRA, going to university, at the time, again, just because three bottles of essential oil had really helped my wife and her emotions. Uh, we were like, okay, let's do this doTERRA thing. Let's give it everything we've got. Uh, the beginning was really, really hard. We went through lots of challenges. This is not a picture of me, but I don't have a picture uh, of, of me donating plasma at the time. But here in the US, I don't know if it's the same in the UK or in South Africa, but you can donate plasma for money. And some of our first LRP orders were literally paid for with our blood. <laughs> and that's because we were we were poor college students. Like we had invested the last money that was in our bank account to purchase our natural solutions kit, right? We, we actually put the money together that we had in our two bank accounts to purchase our first kit. But we had a big vision of what doTERRA could be. And, you know, initially we our, our uh, sales weren't necessarily covering all of our needs, and month two, we were like, hey, let's quit our jobs and just build doTERRA while we go to university. And so we quit our jobs and doTERRA as elites became our, our only source of income. And so even our LRP became a burden and we had to find creative ways to, to pay for it, right? Uh, these are our mentors, Andy and Natalie Goddard. Maybe you've met them. 
to this day, I have no idea why they were crazy enough to put a 22 year old couple on their front line uh, to work with in this business, but they saw something in us and saw our hunger and our desire to, to help people. Here's a picture of our first class ever. So Natalie came and talk, taught our first class. We had to basically beg our friends and family to, to be in the room. I remember telling my mom, please, mom, like, just let me use my house. We don't have a house uh, where we can hold a class. Uh, we were engaged at the time, Shantae and I, and she said, okay, but please never, never ask me to build this business. I'm definitely not going to come to your class, but you can use our house. And I, then I said, okay, that's fine. You know, maybe two days later, I said, please, mom, just sit in the class. I just need butts and chairs to show Natalie that we're working hard. And she came, she ended up buying a kit that day. Today, she's actually a diamond in doTERRA. Um, so it's crazy, crazy how things began. But this was our first class. We had one of the benefits, or we had a great benefit of signing up with Andy and Natalie because, you know, uh, one, they gave us great mentorship, but also they had zero time. So uh, we had the gift of learning how to become independent as fast as possible in our doTERRA journey. So they helped us with one class and then they said, good luck, go and start teaching, right? So it wasn't like it is today where you have Zoom and you can just invite people to the calls your upline is doing. Like we were just doing in-person classes and, and we learned how to be independent fast. And that's part of that's part of what I teach today. So in our team, I think part of the reason we've had so much success and we help so many people reach, you know, good levels of, of success in doTERRA a lot faster than we even achieved them is because we're good at helping people become independent. So if you still are dependent on your upline, if your upline is your crutch in this business, it's time to kick the crutch out from under you and learn to become independent and not dependent on them anymore. Um, okay, I'm going to I'm going to show you guys a picture that's going to scare you. So in our first year, we decided to do something crazy. We've always had this dream of having an international business. And so maybe three or four months into building doTERRA, we were elites at the time, and we decided we wanted to move to Hong Kong, okay? Shantae speaks Mandarin, and we thought, hey, let's move to Hong Kong and try to build a team there. We ended up finding this little room that we could rent that had bunk beds. Uh, we had to put our suitcases on the bottom of the bunk because literally there was no room in the room other than the bunk bed. So we would shimmy in, our, our bags were on the bottom and then we slept on top, you know, newlyweds, we were fine to sleep, cuddling together in a super small space. But uh, like I said, we were elites at the time. Our only income is doTERRA. Hong Kong's like the second or third most expensive city in the world. And we literally started to, we ran out of money and, uh, and I started getting skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. Okay, look at this picture, this is me. This is me back then, okay? Uh, so we literally were going hungry, trying to sell doTERRA oils on the streets in Hong Kong uh, with zero contacts, spent six months. And, uh, but at some point I had an idea and I grabbed a guitar. I bought a guitar for $50 and started busking on the streets, right? Playing music on the streets. And that's what paid for our dinner, our one meal a day, for those six months while we were in Hong Kong. Okay. So I just want you guys to see that, like, we came from nothing. Like we came from zero skills, uh, zero ability, but we, what we had was resilience, passion, and desire. And we were willing to do crazy things, right? Like moving to Hong Kong for six months. Uh, and it was fun. It was an adventure for us. It was never really a, a challenge, but I will say, well, I shouldn't say it was a challenge. It was a challenge. But it was in those moments, in those hardest moments, that we made the decision. And if you write down one phrase from everything that I say here today, I want you to write down this phrase, okay? We decided that we weren't doing doTERRA to see if it would work for us, but we were committed to do doTERRA until it worked for us. So we swapped the if to until. No matter what it took, we said we were going we're gonna to work this business for as long as it takes, as hard as it takes, we're going to personally develop as much as we need to until we get the result that we want, which is which was presidential diamond. Um, and that decision was made in those hard moments. So some of you on this call, maybe you're going through a hard moment personally. It might be with in your relationships. It might be in your finances. It might be in your health. It might be in some aspect. I'll tell you that it's in those hardest moments that are often the most important decisions are made. And decide, if you look at the word decide, de decide, that root side literally means death. So you have like insecticide, 
pesticide, right? It means the death of whatever comes before. Um, so the word decide means the death of other options. You have one choice. If you truly decide that this is what you want, then you, will, you won't entertain other options. You won't let other things come in and shiny object syndrome won't even be a thing for you because you'll be committed to one thing. All other options died off for us there in Hong Kong. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Okay, let me skip this. Okay, so, uh, oh, right here. So there we were. This is one of my favorite average earnings charts. It's from several years ago. But what I like about it is it shows some of the time, the average time to reach different ranks. And it shows the different, the average income, but it also shows the average income when you're new at a rank, right? Uh, I always like to show people the lower average income because typically a silver, the first time they hit silver, they're not gonna hit the average earnings of a silver, right? Because the average silver has bigger volume than maybe a new young silver. Uh, and so I like to show these, these smaller averages to people in the beginning. Um, but I want to share this with you to show you our timeline. So this says here that if you're working an average of eight hours per week, the average is that you'll hit elite in six months, okay? 15 hours a week, the average is that you'll hit elite in two months. And 20 hours a week, the average is that you can hit elite your first month, okay? Maybe some of you on this call hit elite in your first month. Maybe some of you have been several months and you're still looking to get to elite, the average time to get to Premier, the average person that hits Premier works about 15 hours a week, and the average time is three to six months. Okay, Silver is a year, working an average of 25 hours per week. You'll see that as you get to Diamond, the Diamonds who are on this call, they're the people who work the hardest. 40 to 60 hours on average per week is the typical, uh, the typical average for a Diamond. Okay, the average time, two years. Blue Diamond, the time that they work on average goes down a little bit and presidential diamond goes down even more. Now that's, obviously this is just averages, right? Me and my wife, we've chosen to continue to work doTERRA probably 40, 60, sometimes more hours than that per week because we are a little bit obsessed. But this is just the averages. Average to get to presidential diamond is 48 months or four, yeah, 48 months. So Shantae and I, we saw this, 22 years old, and we said, well, we can definitely hit doTERRA. We can definitely hit diamond in a year. Like if we work really hard full time while we're going to school, we can hit diamond in a year. And that became our goal. Okay, um, We worked really hard. And month one, we hit elite. Okay, So we actually hit this first target. Like we were working more than 20 hours a week. And in that first month, we signed up enough people personally for us to reach the rank of elite. And we were like, great, we're on track. It's going to be one rank every month, right? Next month is Premier. The third month, we'll hit silver. And then after a year, we'll get to diamond. Well, month two, building the business, working really hard, doing classes three, four, five times a, uh, a week, we hit elite, okay? We requalified elite. Month three, we decided to work even harder, and we hit elite. Month four, we hit elite. Month five, elite. By this point, we're in Hong Kong. Month six, elite. Month seven, elite. Month eight, elite. Month nine, finally, actually, we hit elite again. And then month 10, elite again, okay? So again, our goal was to hit diamond in one year. We spent our first 10 months at the rank of elite, working really hard. Six months of that full time in Hong Kong, where we signed up like over 50 people personally, but it still didn't duplicate. We weren't getting people to, to grow with us, right? Oh, doesn't that sound exhausting? Doesn't that sound exhausting? Some of you are like, Matt, like, this is not worth it. This is not motivating. What are you talking about? Well, I told you where we're at today, right? So listen, listen to how the rest of the story panned out. After 10 months at Elite, we hit the rank of Premier, okay? And we spent four months at Premier. And then the next month, we actually skipped Silver and hit Gold. And then the very next month, we hit platinum. In other words, in two months, we went from premier to platinum. Okay. Cool, right? That's like, that's the, the Chinese bamboo I talked about at convention, right? Sometimes you're building your roots and then all of a sudden the growth happens. And it honestly, people say like, what did you change? We can talk a little bit about that, but not much changed. It was just that the fruit of our labors finally started to grow things started to duplicate. We started to find the right people and things started to happen. Now, after we hit platinum, we spent four years at platinum, 
Okay, our, our, remember our original goal, diamond in one year, diamond in one year. We spent four years at platinum. Now, some of you are like, oh, I would just, I would die to be a platinum. That'd be amazing to be a platinum. Well, that wasn't our goal. Our goal was diamond. So those four years were pretty excruciating. And honestly, we weren't requalifying every month. So some of those months we'd, we'd hit gold. I think two or three of those months during those four years, we dropped all the way down to silver, all the way down to silver, because two of our qualifying silvers, they decided to quit the business, okay? So four years plateaued at platinum, um, and then we shifted some things, which I can talk about, and we ended up hitting diamond. So it was five and a half years for us to hit the rank of diamond, okay? One year later, we hit blue diamond, and one year later, we hit presidential diamond. So it was seven years and seven months for us to reach presidential diamond. Now, that's not the average four years that it typically takes for people to reach presidential diamond, or at least that the average presidential diamond took. Now, do you guys think that I'm like all depressed and sad today that it took us seven years and seven months to get to presidential diamond, where we have a team of 200 diamonds, 16,000 enrollments every single month pouring into our team, earning seven figures per year. No, I, it was like, I look back and it was totally worth it. It was totally worth it. But I get that some of you on this call, like we are living right now in our team, we're living our best, our best time ever in the business, our best time ever. We will hit this month our record volume that we've ever had. And I think it's, 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 I hope that it's exciting for you to hear that. Like now is the time. Now is the time. We are at a moment when the world is experiencing, experiencing so much uncertainty. And when you step up and plant your flag and say, doTERRA is the way, and you bring confidence and belief to your message, when you understand that you have a miracle in your mouth, right? You have a miracle in your mouth and all you need to do is open your mouth and share it with other people. That's when things start to shift. There's no magic formula. There's no, I can share with you some principles here on this call, but the biggest thing is for you to step up, step out and say, it's time. It's my time, right? And it doesn't matter if you've been four years at platinum or if you've been three years at gold or two years at silver, if you've been 10 months at elite, right? Oftentimes in doTERRA, we hear the stories of the people that are, you know, are having record growth, right? So on our, uh, on our Instagram, like you're, you, I don't know if any of you follow us, but uh, we have someone who this month is hitting blue diamond their first month, okay? They've personally had 830 enrollments this month, Okay. And, and that's like, that's insane. That's crazy. You probably would think like, oh, and they've never done network marketing before. Okay. They have influence. They have a lot of influence. And so they were able to bring in this massive number of people and they're hitting blue diamond, maybe presidential diamond this month. Like they're pushing for presidential. They've already hit blue. They've got another week. It's possible that they'll go presidential diamond their first month. Okay. Now, some of you hear that. And I used to listen to stories like this uh, and it's like, it's kind of discouraging, right? It's like, oh my gosh, that's just, that's just dumb. I've been at this for years and I'm an elite or I'm a premier, right? And we get trapped in this, in this comparison game. So I love this image. I showed this at convention of Michael Phelps and he's swimming his race. And you can see that he's totally focused on where he's going while the guy who's losing is looking at him, Right. Comparison is the thief of joy and it will steal your energy and it will only slow you down. It creates drag. Comparison creates drag. Now, it's different than you being inspired. So I look at this guy who on, came onto our team this month, had 830 enrollments, and I say, wow, I'm thinking too small. I'm thinking too small. And maybe I'm not because we helped to facilitate and create that. If I didn't believe it was possible, we never would have communicated it in a way where this guy came on board to do it, right? So you should be inspired by, by fast results, by big results, by amazing things, but you cannot let that, you cannot let it come inside of you, right? A ship only sinks when the water gets inside. If the water's outside, that's fine. That's what, it keeps the ship afloat. You being inspired by other people will help to keep you afloat. But if you let it get inside and you start to compare and think, oh, who am I? I don't deserve this. I'm not good enough, oh, right? 
then that's letting the water inside your boat. That's going to sink you. So be inspired by what's around you, but do not, do not let it get inside to the point where you're questioning your own abilities, right? Okay. So that's one of the big lessons that I learned in our journey was not to compare, um, but at the same time to be inspired, to let my mind expand to believe that other things are possible. One of the questions that came in, which we'll get to questions here in a second, was somebody asking like, how, how have you had so many people go diamond in their first month? I think we've had now maybe 12 or 13 people on my team hit diamond in their first month. Now, those are typically people that have all, they already have a lot of influence. Maybe they've done network marketing before, or maybe they're an influencer online, or maybe they just have a lot of influence in their community and they're able to do some big launch events and get a hundred people in a room to create enough enrollments to make that result happen quickly. Now hitting diamond doesn't mean that you have a diamond organization, right? Hitting diamond one time is one thing. Hitting diamond every single month is very different. So this guy on our team that's going blue or presidential his first month, is he gonna requalify that next month? Probably not. He'll probably hit diamond, right? With the LRPs of those people uh, uh, re, re, you know, reactivating or purchasing again. Anyway, okay. So if you want to, if you want to follow us, here's our Instagram, Matt underscore Shante. I'm gonna turn off my screen, or I'm gonna turn off the share screen now, and I want to dive into a couple more principles and answer some of your questions. Okay. Um, let's see. Can I go? Okay. Are you guys able to see me? Okay, let's see. I'm gonna go speaker mode just so I can see you guys or go gallery mode, I mean. Okay, so that's a summary of our story. It's been, it's been 11 years of ups and downs, plateaus and just pushing as hard as we can, right? To get to where we're at. Um, now there are, there have been different seasons through this growth process. And I know some of I know some of the questions that you're already thinking, so I'm just going to answer really quick. Okay, Matt, ten months at Elite, and then you know within six months you're platinum. What changed during that time? Honestly, nothing changed in terms of what we were doing. What changed was our our level of skills. So as you as you do 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 as you take action over and over and over and over and over again your skills start to improve, right? I remember Teresa Harding, who's, you know, most people in doTERRA have her in their upline. And she taught me once that, she said once that she enrolled, you know, nine or eight out of every 10 or nine out of every 10 people that she presented to. And again, I compared in the beginning, I was the lead at the time. And I was like, that is just dumb. I enroll like two people out of every 10 that I present to in a class. Um, and I was all discouraged. And she taught some techniques and things that I started to implement in the way that I close people. And guess what happened? Initially, nothing happened. I still enrolled two out of every 10 people that were in front of me. But I said, you know what, Teresa, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna do five times more classes than you. So if, if Teresa, I'm gonna win by just insane effort, right? So if she does one class, and enrolls nine people, and I do five classes with the same number of people, and I enroll 10 people, well, guess what? I'm bringing in more people, <laughs> right? And so I decided in the beginning, at the, during that time as elite, we decided that it was gonna be with intensity of effort that we won the game. And so we, we had intensity of effort, and then interestingly enough, what happened is as we started to have so much intensity in our effort, our averages started to get better. Our skills were acquired in action mode. Too many of you want to learn in theory. So you come to these Zooms and you listen and you absorb and you continue to analyze and you continue paralyzed, right? But it's an action that you truly develop. And so in action and doing all that action, it got to the point where, oh, we were enrolling three out of every 10, four out of every 10, five out of every 10, six out of every 10, seven out of every 10. We never got to the level of nine out of every 10 people, but we improved our numbers through improving our skills through the massive action that we were taking. Now, Matt, what about when you were platinum? What made the difference when you were stuck at platinum? Some of you have been at a decent level, maybe premier, silver, gold, and you've been there for a long time. Well, I'll tell you what made the biggest difference 
at that phase was also intensity of effort. <laughs> so we had moved to we had moved to Charleston, South Carolina. We're living close to the beach. We were platinums, you know, 20, 25 years old, earning five, six thousand dollars a month. You're doing okay. Like you're not, you're not going hungry, right? Um, and so we were still working hard, but we were spending most of our time in what's called management mode. So we were spending our time uh, doing trainings for our team, creating new PowerPoints, right? Or we were spending our time doing classes for other people in our organization. But our personal enrollments had gone down significantly. We weren't enrolling the way we were at the beginning of our journey. And so basically after the first three and a half years of Platinum, I got I got really angry. <laughs> Two of our silvers had disappeared and we were just kind of putting people there and doing classes, trying to maintain things. And I got angry and I said, you know what? Never again will I depend on any specific person in my doTERRA business. I'm going to start over in my recruitment, okay? And in that year, we signed up, I think 150 people uh, after you know being in the business for around four years, which to some here, that sounds like a big number. To some of you, you're like, oh, I like that's that's not huge. Uh, but for us at that time, that was a big number to do 150 enrollments when we felt like we had already talked to everybody that we knew. It was really significant. And so just through massive action, we personally brought in another 150 people that year. And that's what then pushed us to Diamond. Okay. And getting out of management mode and getting back into massive, massive personal production is really what, what got us out of that plateau. So if you're feeling stuck right now, I'm sorry, but there's no magic script to resurrect the dead. There's no, uh, there's there's not, the, the way that you're going to grow is bringing in new people and helping them achieve results. It's also the fastest way for you to wake up the dead. Like, and we shouldn't say dead, we should say sleeping, right? How many of you raise your hand if you have a sleeping giant on your team? Someone who you're like, man, their potential is huge, but they're just asleep, right? We all have these sleeping giants on our team. The only thing that's going to wake up that sleeping giant is you to create a new result with someone brand new that's bigger than the result than they have that they have right now. And it doesn't matter what level we talk about. Maybe two or three years ago, I was sensing, wow, like our diamonds, they're going to sleep. Our blue diamonds are retiring, right? Man, what are we going to do? All I had to do was bring on a new frontline person, take that person to Blue Diamond in three or four months, which sounds insane, and it is insane, but that's what I did. And guess what happened to all of those diamonds that were sleeping? They woke up. <laughs> they woke up. They said, how is that even possible? What? Like, I'm not working hard enough, right? And it started to, and you can't wake up everyone, but it will wake up several. So the best thing you can do for your existing team is to go out and build a new team. Always, always. We think, oh, how can I support them better? How can I, you know, use my NLP to hack their brain? And the, honestly, the best thing you can do is to help other people achieve. It's to not wait for them. And they will wake up if, you know, if they're going to wake up, that's usually how it's going to happen. So, all right. I'm sorry. I'm just rambling now at this point, but let's, let's dig into some of your questions. So, um, okay. Should I, I should ask them or do you want to just pick some, Matt? I mean, because I know I sent, that was amazing. Thank you, Matt. Brilliant. And you answered loads of the questions already in that. So. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Do you want me to just go through some of these that you sent me? Yeah. Yeah. Do you, I mean, can I just ask you, I, I want to know what, what motivates you now? Like what continues to motivate you, Matt? Because you've got the money, you've got the influence. Yeah. Okay. So. And then. For me, for me, what what has always motivated me is a very clear vision of the future that I desire. Um, and I'll tell you guys, there are some people. I think most of the DoTerra community is is a lot better than me. Okay, they're just better people. Uh, that's why I like DoTerra. I surround myself with these people who, like their whole motive, their whole why is just like serving other people, you know, and like helping other people with the oils. And I think that's so cool. I'm a little, I, I'm a little more selfish. Like even, even helping people with the oils, I do it because it makes me feel good, right? Like I do it because it, it makes me feel happy. I, same thing with helping someone new in the business. Like it's, it's kind of selfish, but it feels so good to see a brand new person go from zero to gold or zero to diamond. Like it just feels good. And so 
that's what I'm chasing, honestly. It's just that feeling of seeing progression in other people. Uh, me seeing other people benefiting in their health or in their finances, that's one of that's one of the big motivators. But I'll also say that, you know, financially, the future that I want for my family, I'm not even close. Like, I'm not even close. So we have a level of freedom where sure we could we could like retire and just maintain the type of life that we have. But I mean, we want to being I was just in Kenya, right? A couple months ago. Like I want to be able to go to Kenya and just go drop the money to build a school right there and just do it for a month or two, right? Uh, we just in the month of November, we decided, hey, we want to build a team in India. So we went as a family and we spent an entire month in India traveling around the country, doing events, uh, falling in love with the culture. And we dropped like 20 or 30 grand in one month just to be able to stay in, you know, nice enough hotels to feel like we could take our kids and, and things like that. And so um, the vision, the vision that I have for my future, like we're not even, we're not even close. I want to be able to have a portfolio of, of investments, for example, that creates freedom where I don't, I don't even need to depend on my doTERRA income. Um, so there's a lot of different things that motivate me, but I, I like to continue choosing the thoughts that I'm not even close, that I'm not even close to the level of impact. Like I look at our little team, we have, you know, maybe f about 400,000 people on our team or something like that. And I think like, that's so small, right? That's so small. We could, we could have the, the, our upline, the Goddards have 2 million people on over 2 million people on their team. That seems, that seems so much better, right? And so I just continue to keep thinking that it's not enough. And I could probably choose different thoughts and think, oh, like this is enough. Let's just retire. Uh, but I just choose to to not think that way. <laughs> I love that. And is that your same um, response to like limiting thoughts? Like you just choose not to believe them. <laughs> Do you just like choose to? Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't believe any limiting thoughts. I mean, I do until I decide, decide to question them, right? We all have our own limiting limiting beliefs, yeah. but every thought we have is optional, right? And this is what Shantae and I, we spend a lot of time doing thought work with our team and with ourselves. So she has a, she has a call actually that's open to anybody that wants to join every Wednesday. And it's just people, it's just working through thoughts and limiting beliefs. Um, and when you when you understand that every single thought that comes into your mind is optional, like you realize that your reality is optional. Yeah. And that's that's the scariest thing. And it's the most exciting thing because you realize, wow, everything that I have created in my life is my fault. It's it's my fault because I chose these thoughts that got me to where I'm at today. But it's also the most freeing thing when you realize that every single thing that you've created in your life is your fault. Thus, you can change your thoughts and transform completely your life. Right. So we continue to, to seek that. And I'm breaking through new thought or new limiting beliefs all the time, all the time. Love it. Okay, go on. Choose some questions that you want to answer, Matt, from that list. Thank sure. you. Okay, yeah, let's just, I'll, I'll answer these more more quickly too, because I know you guys are short on time. I've got all day. Oh, no, we'll, I don't think any of us <laughs> would sit here longer, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so um, this Let's just, I'll just go through these quickly. Uh, I would be interested to know if most of his successful builders came from people who were originally customers rather than people he introduced to build a business. If I look at my current qualifiers today, most of them came from people that I directly invited them to the business. I invite people way more to the business than to the products personally. That is my passion. The business is what lights me up. And so whatever causes you to light up is what is going to convert other people, right? Our belief and our enthusiasm is transferable. And so if you're really enthusiastic about the products, then you're going to sell product. If you're really enthusiastic about the business, then you're going to sell the business. I do both. I would say of all of our enrollments, probably most of them came from introducing them to the products first. But when I look at my qualifiers, it's because I saw someone who had business uh, in them and I invited them to the business first. Um, Okay, business goes through phases and the start is not the same as the middle, assuming we don't have an end. What would Matt say are the things that made him successful initially and what keeps him successful now? I think we've talked a little bit about that, but uh, massive action to this day. Like I, I choose to spend about 80% of my time. I at least I seek to spend 80% of my time 
in personal production activities. So that's that's the IPing. You guys know inviting, presenting, and enrolling. Now, is does it always turn out that way? No. With a big team, sometimes a lot of times fires come up that 50 or 60% of my time that's personal production, but it's minimum of that. And I've uh I choose that in part because those four months of platinum traumatized me. <laughs> okay. Like that, that decision of, I will never again depend on any specific qualifier. Um, it's a powerful decision and it's an important decision. Uh, I, there was, there were years where I said, no, it has to be these people. I have to help these people succeed. And I wanted it for them more than they wanted it for themselves. Right. And when I let go of that and said, no, it's just, I'm going to work with whoever wants to work and I'm going to continue to find new people. And I truly decided to live in abundance and realize there's an entire world of people. Today, I have a qualifier in Italy. I have a qualifier in Japan. I have qualifiers in Brazil. I have a qualifier in the US. I have a qualifier on my M1 account in India, right? Like there's so much abundance in the world. Um, and so, yeah, I just continue to, I just continue to stay in personal production. What skill do you need to develop now to prepare for the market changes in the next two years? Honestly, I don't think you need to develop many new skills. I think you need to take a lot more action and that the development of the new skills will come just as you're taking action. So you don't need to be conscious of what you need to change. You just need to take action. There will be a lot of shifts in the next two years. Like I've started using some artificial intelligence tools and things like that. Not nearly as much as what other people are using, I'm sure. Um, but those things, they come in as you're seeking improvement and as you're just taking action. Um, and so I, I wouldn't think too much about what you need to develop in terms of new skills. I would ask yourself, are you currently exercising the skills that you have? That's the more important question. If you're currently exercising the skills that you have, which most of you are not, <laughs> you're not. And I'm just going to be frank because maybe your upline is going to coddle you and like stroke your hair and give you kisses and love you. I just, I just hit people. I just, I'm just, you're not on my team, so I can say whatever I want, right? You're not, you're not even utilizing the skills that you already have. So why would you think about future skills, right? Well, once you maximize the skills that you already have in terms of presenting, in person, you're back doing all of your in-person classes that you did back in the beginning, plus you're doing online classes, plus you're doing some social media posting, like new skills are going to come up for you naturally. Okay, my best friend Peter said, uh, here's a question I'm sure all builders can relate to. Our businesses go through cycles and we can get stuck at a rank or even drop back. What would you? What would be the best advice to get back into growth mode? Okay, I think I've answered that one. Personal production is the only thing. It's the only way to get back into growth mode. Uh, when coaching builders, do you recommend structuring for power of three or building for rank, or does it depend on their circumstances? This is one of my favorite questions because I just don't understand it, <laughs> and I get it all the time. Uh, so I I look at the compensation plan and I think, okay, would I rather earn the power of three bonus or like a premier bonus, for example. Like I do understand the question, right? You can structure, you know, two teams for hitting the empowerment bonus, or you can focus on three for power of three. And I just think like, why would it, why would it not just always be and? Like, why would the answer not always be and? So like, if I'm gonna create a premier, I'm gonna focus on building a premier that has two legs that are executive and one leg that's director for the 5,000 in volume. So they earn the empowerment bonus and the power of three. So I always look at all of the bonuses and think, okay, how can I help everyone earn all of the bonuses in the compensation plan? Okay. So for me, it's not power of three or rank. It's just both. You just do both. Um, and sure, if you're like, if you're like one or two orders away from your second level power of three, you're closer to that than you are to hitting premier, then go for that, right? And go for that. Um, but I just think that we limit ourselves when we think it needs to be one or the other. If I had someone in that situation, I would just say, okay, let's map out exactly what you need to do to hit premier and earn your second level power of three. And we would just make both happen. Okay. Um, Again, and that's part of just choosing the mindset of there's no limitations. Like when you really just believe there's no limitations, you can do whatever you want and achieve whatever you want, then that's what you do. Okay, in Portugal, you said that you had 10 people go diamond very quickly in a month. 
or so for joining. What do you attribute this remarkable growth to? Influence. Some of you are scared of talking to the most influential people that you know, or you prejudge people, right? You need to strip away all prejudgments, all prejudgments. Like I, I look at this guy on our team who joined this month. He has 1.5 million followers on Instagram. He's had 830 personal enrollments this month. And, you know, I think most people would have looked at him and seen all the courses that he sells online. And they would say, there's no way, like, there's just no way this guy's going to be interested in doTERRA. But someone looked at him and said, wow, he is perfect. He is perfect. doTERRA is the perfect thing for him. It's going to help him diversify his income. It's going to help him create a scenario where instead of him just always selling, people actively throw money at him because they want to participate in his status, right? Um, they mapped out and executed a launch that was impeccable, like an impeccably organized launch so that thousands of people felt like they truly had, and they did have individualized contact with him and access and their questions answered. And the way that it was structured was just impeccable. But you wouldn't even get your mindset in the space of, of mapping out something so epic if you didn't believe that it was possible, right? If you didn't have already the belief that, wow, this is the best thing for them. So a couple of the beliefs that I want you to acquire for yourself is one, that, that you are the perfect upline for every single person that you know and that could come into doTERRA. Like you need to believe that, that you're the best option. Some of you are thinking, oh, like, oh, they'd just all, they'd be, they'd all be better with, with Rebecca, or they'd all be better, like this person would be better if someone else signed them up. Well, guess what? As long as you keep choosing that thought, that's going to be your reality. But if you just believe, no, I am the best option. And you could be, you could be a brand new leader today and look at someone who's going to hit diamond in their first month. And you could choose to believe I'm the best person for them. Why? Because I'm brand new. I have more energy. I have more enthusiasm. I have more time. I can commit more of myself to this person. It doesn't matter you don't, if you don't have the success story yet. I had, I had a diamond on my team before I hit diamond. I had a presidential diamond on my team before I hit presidential diamond. I had a frontline presidential diamond before I hit presidential diamond. And I mentored him and he gave me all the credit. He gave me all the credit. I think I was a diamond when he hit presidential. Okay? So strip away, strip away the negative beliefs and choose to believe I'm the best option for everyone. And choose to then believe that doTERRA is also the best option for every single person out there. You can give me any person with any circumstances, any level of income, any level of anything. It could be someone who lives on a dirt floor, or it could be someone who's already a multimillionaire. And I will give you reasons why doTERRA is the best thing that they could do for their future. And those are the beliefs that I choose to have. And that's how we attract people who have big influence and who are able to then go out and hit big ranks quickly. Okay. Uh, what tips would you give us to obtain committed commitment and instilling confidence when onboarding new builders? One of my biggest tips would be to require independence of people quickly. So the first thing I say, someone has, a, we're going over the build guide with someone. I say, listen, my goal for you Joe, is that you become independent of me as fast as possible. Do you agree that that's a good idea? And I ask that question. If they say no, like I want to depend on you, then I already know that I'm not going to invest in very much of my time with them unless they're willing to alter that choice. And I'll say, listen, if you're dependent on my time, my energy for your business growth, you're going to be very limited. I, I refuse to be the crutch in your business. So if you're willing to, to become independent of me as fast as possible, then I'm going to give you everything I've got for these first you know, 60, 90 days. But it has to be with the intention, with the plan for you to be, be independent of me by the time we're done with your launch. And I, I help them to choose into that. And that's a big part of what keeps them, like it's a big part of what helps them choose to be builders and then stay motivated. The next thing you said you know, is how to keep people motivated. If someone's, if someone's having results, they're motivated, right? And so I just, I just help people get results. And, and if they're not willing to do the action required, then, then I'm just really upfront with them and say, listen, if you're not willing to do this, if you're not willing to invite you know, 45 people for you to hit elite, 
then I'm sorry, you're just never going to hit elite. So we need to find a way for you to feel confident or excited or ready to invite 45 people. What's, what's missing? And I just have really frank conversations with people to help them get into action. And then that helps get them the result, right? Sometimes we work too. You guys have seen the cycle belief, uh, the uh, belief action results. You've seen that loop, right? In all of our materials. You can actually interrupt. You can interrupt that cycle at any point. So a lot of people focus on belief and I do that as well. But if, if you're not helping someone change your, their beliefs, sometimes all you have to do is force the action to get a result. And that result will then will that result will then help fuel their belief, right? So if you're just not getting through and building their belief, just force the result. And what do I mean by that? I mean, like you sit down with them in person, put 30 names on a list, put an event on the calendar, call those people with them in the room with you, inviting them to the class. You teach the class, like you just do the action required for them to see a result and then build their belief and you start to, to fuel that cycle. Now it's exhausting. It's better when you just find people who are, they already come into the business with, with belief, right? They already come in willing to take action. And so the results come easily. But for most, most people, we need to interrupt that cycle and we need to get in there and, and force it to happen. Okay. Uh, how do you get more customers on LRP? Well, uh, Probably all the things you've already you've already heard before. I don't do anything really special. So, um, wellness consults, education, and promotions. Those are the the main three levers that I pull for getting people on LRP. Let's see. What angle have you found works best for attracting prospects to MetaPower? Testimonials. Testimonials. So, create a bank as a team. Create a bank of testimonials where you know you can you you find a testimonial of someone who's improving in their skin someone who's, who's improving in their weight someone who's improved in their mental clarity someone who's improved in every way possible um, and you can say our team is helping people get these results and you can share a testimonial with someone right uh, even if they're not on your team you're a part of this team and so you can say our team is helping people get these results you could be someone here who has no enrollments but you could have 50 testimonials and send those out to people and be like, look, these are, these are the results that our team is helping people achieve, right? So testimonials is the best way that I've found to get people interested in MetaPower. Uh, did I miss any? Did I get all the questions? Are there any in the chat yeah. here? I, I think a couple came in the chat. I'm just looking right now, actually. See if you see any. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tim. So there's one directly here. That says, when you found new builders and stopped waiting, did you build new front lines or build double double qualifiers under existing legs? A combination, a combination of the two. I I very rarely start a brand new leg. I probably start you know one new person per year on my front line because I just require so much. I just have such a high expectation if someone's going to be a, a front line qualifier for me. Um, and maybe that's a limiting belief. Maybe I need to shift that a little bit, but I have a lot of situations where I do have like a second person in my depth who, who could qualify me. Um, like I, yeah. So a combination of the two, I will say that when I look at the time that we spent at platinum, like you really need to get into your intuition as well, I think, because I believe in energy. And those two plat those two silver legs that we had when we originally hit platinum that we ended up just feeding for three years without seeing anything happen, it was almost like they were energetic black holes. Like we would put someone really good in that team and they would just die. Even though we were treating them as if we were trying to treat them as if they were frontline, maybe it was just our own limitation, but it felt like it was just energetic, if that makes sense. And so we actually only broke through and hit diamond when we opened up two brand new qualifiers on our front line uh, or brand new people on our front line. And we took them to silver in like two or three months after being, you know, after trying to just maintain these other two silvers for two or three years. <laughs> so I think you have to kind of follow your own intuition. Um, I do have situations where I put someone in the depth and they qualify me today. I have one or two of those, uh, and in other cases, other cases we just we just created new teams. If you're planning, if you're thinking big, 
Like some people are afraid of having wasted volume. Okay. Buy into this mindset with me really quick. Like some people are afraid of having, you know, 2000 in volume on their front line that doesn't qualify their other teams. I've never really understood that fear. Like if you're planning on doing this on a big scale, at least like I am, I'm looking at, you know, how can I reach triple presidential diamond? Like how can I reach quadruple presidential diamond someday? I'm not really worried about just, you know, two or 3000 in volume on my front line that, that doesn't, doesn't qualify. Sometimes I think we get in this game of manipulation, right? Like how many, how can I ask for, I've never ever request exceptions in doTERRA, never. I just believe in production over manipulation, always production over manipulation and choosing that mindset and believing it's so easy to go out and create 2000, 3000, a new volume to fill a gap instead of trying to manipulate or like, I just choose to believe that that's easy. So if I have, I do have multiple people on my front line that do two or 3000 in volume a month, they don't qualify for anything today, but I just choose to believe, okay, well maybe here in five years, someone in that organization will hit silver that I have enroller on or can get enroller on and they'll qualify me for triple diamond or quadruple diamond, right? Like it, there's just no scarcity. It's all abundance. Okay, let's see. Um, further up, Joe asked, okay, cool. What do you mean you saw business in them? So I guess is she asking like maybe with some customers underneath you, you saw the business potential in them. What does that look like? She's asking, what does that look like? And how do your invitations to a class look like? Cool. Okay. I'm going to go, I'm going to go in reverse. So my introduction, my invite to a class, uh, if for someone that's new, I recommend that the invite literally be, Hey, you know, hi, Joe. Recently I've discovered some natural products that are transforming the way I take care of my family's health. And I'm curious if you'd be open to learn about them. That's it. And the most important phrase there is open to learn. That's what I teach. That's what I do. In every invite, I'm just asking if people are open to learn or open to take a look. That's the languaging. Psychologically, humans, we want to be open. We don't want to be closed-minded. And so if you ask for openness, people will almost always say yes. And then all you need to do is schedule the time where they're coming to your class or your online event or your one-on-one, -on -one, right? Same thing with the business. If I were brand new, I'd say recently I've discovered an opportunity that is changing my life financially. And even if you're brand new, you can say that it's changing. You're in the process of changing your life financially. So you don't have to promise results. Even to this day, I never say, oh, like I'm making $80,000, $90,000 a month. You should come and join my team. Like that's just dumb. And it doesn't duplicate, right? So instead, I say, I've found an opportunity that is changing my life financially. Anybody can say that, right? And I'm curious if you would be open to take a look, right? And then, and then if they say, yes, I'm open to take a look or yes, I'm open to learn, then great. We schedule the, the time when they're going to learn, whether it's a, yeah, uh, an online event, one-on-one -on -one, or anything like that. In terms of seeing business in people. Okay. The truth is that I believe that every human on the planet has the potential in them to become a diamond in doTERRA, right? However, because of my own limitations, I only see the diamond sometimes in other people. I choose to personally invite people directly to the business when I see a diamond in them. Now, I probably see a diamond in people more often than most people see diamond in other people. And I think that's why I invite so much to the business, right? Because I see business in them. Like I see the diamond in them. And so that's what I mean by that. Um, and other people are only going to see it if you see it first, right? There's the famous quote, by, I think it was Maxwell that says leadership is seeing potential in other people and communicating it co so clearly that they see it in themselves. That's how you become a leader in this business. You see potential and you communicate it. And so uh, when I see that potential, I make sure that I'm communicating it and I invite them directly to the business. Wow. I think people are adding more questions now. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah, I've got time for maybe one or two more, and then I've got to, I've just got to call in 30 minutes here. Of course. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Well, what's the best way to recon to recontact fence sitters who've been on a class and haven't decided yet to enroll? Any particular amazing way to close? Um, 
my favorite way to invite fence sitters to enroll is actually just to get them on another class. Because when I just when you just reset your process with them, then it gives you another opportunity to do the whole close. And the way that I do a close is after after a class, I call the person, I make sure that I've scheduled before they've even come to the class. I've already scheduled the conversation I'm going to have with them privately after the class, whether it's in person, then it's going to happen right there. If it's an online event, I'm going to call them as soon as I can right after. Right. And I just ask the question, hey, what did you like most about what you saw? What did you like most about what you saw? And they'll start to tell me what they liked. I don't ever ask, what did you not like? What did you dislike? Never, never. I only care about what they like, right? What did you like about what you saw? And then as they as they list one or two things, oh, I liked that breed that you talked about that helps with respiratory support. I thought about my, my nephew, Charlie, right? Uh, then I'll say, great, what else did you like about what you saw? What else did you like? And I wait until I have two or three things. And I just say the phrase, it sounds to me like you're ready to get started. That's it. That's what I say. It sounds to me like you're ready to get started with, with what you told me you liked, with what you told me you liked these two or three products for the business. Here's my recommendation. We have this kit and we have this kit. They have these products, these sizes of oils, right? If I were you, I'd get this kit, but which of these two options makes the most sense for you right now? That's my close, right? So if I get the person coming to another class, be it an emotions class or a meta power class, or just another essential oil class, when they've already come, we're going to have new testimonials. It's going to be different. I'm going to sell that class to them as if it's like this revolutionary thing, right? You've got to be on this call. It's going to be amazing, right? And then when they, when they, I make sure that I have my follow-up schedule. Great. Can I call you? Can I call you right after the class? And then when I call them, I say, Hey, what did you like most about what you saw? So if I have a fence sitter, I just try to get them in the loop of more education so that I can do the same follow-up with them again. I'm probably the most simple, like, you know, that, that phrase, keep it simple, stupid. Like that's just me. I'm, I'm just Matt. I'm like the most simple guy, right? I don't have any secrets. I just, I just repeat the same thing <laughs> until the person buys. Okay. So that's what I would do with fence sitters. That's amazing. So the, what, the question above that, this can be our end question then, Matt, because we've taken, you know, thank you so much for your time. Um, I'll expand upon the question above. So they've asked, you know, what's the communication from lead to enroll? So is that the same? So when you found someone and you sampled someone and they don't come to a class, do you continue to sample? Is that what you do with that person or just build relationships? Oh, you guys might not like me. This is You might not <laughs> like my last answer. I actually never sample people, okay? So most people in doTERRA sample and get amazing results from sampling. I'm just too lazy. Like, I, again, I'm just too simple. I'm just a simpleton. So I never do the work of sampling people. Um, and, and maybe that's, maybe I'm missing out on a lot of business, but I don't think so because I just choose to have the belief that people are going to buy without a sample. And I think sometimes when we sample someone, then they end up just wanting to buy that one oil or they want to wait. And if the sample doesn't create the result they want, then I've been irresponsible as a wellness advocate, because I know that if someone struggles with sleep, lavender is not a guarantee. Lavender is not a guarantee. Like their need physiologically might be different than what lavender has to offer. I have people who use, you know, wild orange to help them sleep or frankincense to help them sleep or balance to help them sleep. And so I just, I just come from the belief that buying a kit is the only option. It's the only option for me to be responsible. If somebody comes to me and says, hey, I want to buy one or two oils, I say, that would be irresponsible of me. That would be irresponsible of me. We live a wellness lifestyle here in doTERRA. I need to get you hooked up with a kit because then if one of the products you're looking, one of the solutions that you're looking for, if one of the products doesn't take care of that, we have another option. We've got Copaiba in there, or we've got, you know, this other product that can help you. Mm -hmm. So, um, Anyway, but yeah, from as far as from lead to enrollment, that's really the process that I take people through. It's just it's just the invite to a presentation to follow up with a, and and having them purchase the kit. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty simple. Cool, cool, love that. Okay, well, thank you, thank you so much. People have already started to put in the chat how inspiring and motivating and helpful this has been, um, and it really has, Matt. Thank you. You've been so generous with your time. You've been so honest which is what we expected because that seems that's who you are that's who you presented yourself to be always that I've seen you so thank you so much for all of those tips just incredible 
and well done for your achievements like I I'm, I'm inspired by what you've achieved you and Shantae it's, it's amazing and your mindset it's fantastic thank you. thank you thank you so much it's such an honor to be here wish you guys all the best thanks Matt thank you enjoy the rest of your day <laughs>